Okay. Guru Amar Das was the third Sikh master, and he had a daughter named Bibi Bani. And Bibi Bani was perhaps the one woman in Sikh history who could have become a master herself. Like, she could have become the guru. Because people always say, why weren't there any women gurus in the Sikh? Well, Bibi Bani was the one woman who could have done it. But when she did this profound act of devotion for her father one day, he was sound asleep and the, the leg of his chair broke and she put her hand under the chair and held it up so that it wouldn't disturb her father's rest. And the chair cut into her hand and caused her to bleed, but she sat there holding the chair so he could sleep. It was this beautiful act of devotion. And when Guru Amardas finally woke and he looked at his daughter and he saw her devotion and he said to her, okay, you can ask me for anything that you want and I will give it to you. And up until the time of Guru Amar Das, who the next Guru was, it was like blow with the wind, you know? Who was going to be the next Guru? Who knew? Who knew? But Bibi Bani in that moment asked, I would like for the Guru's line to come through me. I would like to be the mother of the line of the Gurus from now on. So she didn't ask to become the Guru herself. She asked to become a manifestation of the Divine Mother. And Guru Amar Das said, okay, I will grant your wish. So Bibi Bani was married to uh, Guru Ram Das, the, the man who was Jetha, who became the fourth Guru, Guru Ram Das. And Bibi Bani had three sons. Now, you got to understand the context. We're talking profoundly patriarchal culture, right? Who gets all the power in the patriarchy? The firstborn. Firstborn son gets all the power. Bibi Bani has asked, please may the Guru ship come through me. She has three sons. Who do you think everybody's assuming is going to be the next Guru? The first son. Who do you think himself thinks he's going to be the next Guru? The first son. And the first son was named Prithi Chand. So Prithi Chand figured, and everybody else around him figured, he was going to be the Guru because he's the firstborn. Arjun Mal was the thirdborn. But Arjun, the third born, was the only one that Guru Amar Das, you know, kind of related to when he was first born. And as time was growing, Prithi Chand was becoming a very traditional first born. He was watching out for the money, making sure it was in his pocket. He was guarding his territory. He was lining up all of his, you know, supporters so when the time came, he could get the crown from his dad. And... He was jealous and nervous about Arjun, the youngest. So there was this jockeying going on. Not that Arjun was jockeying, but Prithi Chan was like, okay, got to watch out for this guy. And Guru Ram Das was very much the guru in his, in his neutral mind. So there came a moment in time where somebody from, so uh, Guru Ram Das and his family lived in what's now Amritsar, and um, someone from Lahore, which is a ways away, now in Pakistan, comes to Guru Ram Das. It's a family wedding. We want you to come. Guru Ram Das says, I can't make it, but I'll send one of my sons in my place. Prithi Chand, will you go represent me at this wedding? Oh, no, no, no. I have to watch out for the Lunger Kitchen, and I have too many responsibilities here. I have to watch out for my, you know, pot of money that I'm, you know, getting on the side. You know, no, I can't go. Second son, will you go? This guy is more of an ascetic than anything else. He's like, no, I, I, I meditate. I don't need to be involved in worldly affairs. I'm not going to go. Arjun, will you go? Yes, Father, I will obey you. Whatever your command is, I'll obey and I'll go. And Guru Ram Das sends him off and says, do not come back to me until I call for you. All right. So Arjun is sent off packing to Lahore for this wedding where he has to hang out until his father calls him again. And Prithi Chan is like, okay, he's got, he's got the lay of the land now because Arjun's out of the way. So Arjun's hanging out. The wedding happens. He's in Lahore. He's waiting. His dad doesn't call him. He's waiting. His dad doesn't call him. He's waiting. And he starts to get into this space of longing. Like, damn, when's my dad going to call me? I miss you. I miss you. I'm missing you. I'm missing you. I'm missing you more. I'm missing you more. Where are you? I want to see you. I got, why am I, why haven't you called me yet? Where, when is love going to come? Right? That's what we get into. Like the whole life, we're working, we're this, we're that. And somewhere in the back of our mind, we're like, when is the love going to happen? That's what I came here for. Guru Arjun's there. When is my dad going to call? When is my guru? When is my father going to call me? So he's like, okay, 
I'm going to write him a letter. And he sits down and he writes the first letter. And this is the tr my humble translation of that letter that Ashana recited so beautifully at the beginning. My mind longs to see you, O guide of light. It weeps like the cuckoo without water. My desire goes unsatisfied. Peace does not come to me so long as I do not see my wise beloved one. I would give everything that I am. I would dissolve myself as a sacrifice so that I could behold you, guide of light, my wise beloved one. He's calling on his father. He gives the letter to a servant. The servant goes back to Amritsar. Who intercepts the servant? Prithi Chan, the oldest son. Prithi Chan grabs the letter, reads the letter, and immediately freaks out. Oh no, he's gonna come back here. I can't have him come back here. So he says to the servant, go tell Arjun to just stay in Lahore until his father calls for him. So the servant goes back to Arjun, Dave, and says, this is what happened. And Arjun was like, did my dad see the letter? And he's like, no, your brother, your oldest brother grabbed the letter, and that was what he said for me to tell you. And so now <laughs> Arjun Mal's like, oh, come on, you got to be kidding me. My father didn't even see the, see the letter. So now he's in an even deep, right, deeper state. Like, Because you got to imagine the time frame. This isn't the days of the Internet. I sit down, I write my little letter, I pop the email off. You know, the servant had to go from Lahore all the way to Amritsar, interact with Prichichan, come all the way back, and Arjun's just waiting for the word to come to me, right? That's what we're waiting for. We want love to call us. When am I going to get to be with you? I'm waiting for you to call me. You didn't call me. Why didn't you call me? You never call me. It's the play of the soul that we're doing with each other all the time. So now Arjun's like, okay. So he sits down to write the second letter. And this is my humble you know, uh, translation of the second letter. Oh, darling, your face is so delightful. And the sound of your heavenly words bring harmony and ease. You know, he's, ta he's talking about the memory of his father and how much he misses him. It has been such a long time since this cuckoo, lost in longing, has seen a single raindrop. My dear, my beloved protector and friend, the land where you live is so blessed. As in, I'm not with you and I'm dying out here. Right? The land where you live is blessed. <laughs> I would give everything that I am. I would dissolve myself as a sacrifice for you, guide of light, my dear, my beloved protector and friend. Right. Prithi Chand is on the watch because this time Arjun Dev has said to the servant, make sure this gets into the hands of my father. Don't give it to my older brother. Get it to my dad. Okay, so we see what poison is playing out here. Poison of greed, poison of ego, poison of pride is interrupting the call of love. Okay, happens in ourselves and it happens in our relationships with each other. It's this poison that's getting in the way of the call and the longing of the love. So the servant comes, but Prithi Chand is on watch. Now this time, the second time, Prithi Chand literally tackles the servant and pulls the letter out of his hand. <laughs> Okay, he, this guy's just innocently trying to find Ram Das and avoid the oldest son. Tackles him, wrestles him to the ground, grabs the letter, says, "Tell Arjun to stay there until his dad calls him." Like what? And this is what the soul goes through. The soul longs for love, is calling for love. It's so innocent, and then these poisons come and ambush it and make it impossible, and make it a pain and a challenge, and what, what do you mean? And then, so here we go, servant all the way from Lahore, all the way back, tells a story to, to Arjun, and now he's like, okay, <laughs> we're gonna do this one more time. And he sits down, and he writes the third letter. And each of these letters get more intense in their call. The longing gets more intense and more intense and more intense. Just one moment of being apart from you takes me into the age of darkness, right? The Kali Yuga, just one moment. Like I've been here for so long and just one moment away from you is being in the age of darkness. Now when will we meet again, beloved? Now he's calling on his father as a beloved. You know, we've even gone to this level of just tremendous devotion. 
You adorable, enchanting divine one, my nights never end. Sleep does not come to me without seeing the radiant court of my dear guide of light. I would give everything that I am. I would dissolve myself as a sacrifice for that radiant court of ultimate truth where my dear guide of light abides. Right. He puts the number three on this letter. And he tells the servant, no matter what it takes, get this into the hands of my father and my guru. I want to see him. I miss him and I want to come home. So now the servant is aware and Prithi Chand is aware. <laughs> so the servant comes back to Amritsar and he's like hiding. And Prithi Chand is out on the watch, but he's also trying to watch the offerings in the kitchen and all the little places where he's siphoning off his, you know, stash for himself. So at some point, he kind of disappears to go check on his business. And the moment that happens, the servant, boom, to Guru Ram Das, bows at his feet and gives him the letter. So Guru Ram Das, he doesn't know any, well, we don't know what he knows, but the letter gets to him finally after the third call, the third longing, the letter gets to him. And now Guru Ram Das reads it. And he sees the number three on it. And he says, okay, something's going on here. So he asks the servant, this is the third lever, letter, where's the first and second one? And the servant explains what happened. And then Guru Ram Das calls in Prithi Chand, and Prithi Chand denies the whole thing. I don't know anything about any letter. What are you talking, this is the first time for, what do you mean? I would never do anything like that. <laughs> Daddy of mine who I have to inherit everything from. Right? The game of the ego, the game of the mind, denying, denying. The ego denies that it's blocking the love. That's the problem with ego. The ego is given to us to serve our life, but it makes a shadow that blocks us from the experience of love. And the guru is the only one who can confront and change that. That's why we meditate. That's why we chant. To give the guru a chance to confront the ego, to cut the ego, so the call of love can prevail. So Guru Ram Das, all-knowing, says, to the, says, go get Prithi Chan's coat in his house, blah, 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 because that's where Prithi Chan had hid the letters. So the coat comes to the Guru, the letters are revealed, and Guru Ram Das says, you know, I see you for what you are. And in that moment, Guru Ram Das always knew what his sons were, but that's the moment where the game got revealed. Right? Now, how can Prithi Chan become the Guru if that's his consciousness? It's not possible because it's a spiritual crown. It requires a consciousness, not a political game. Now, Guru Ram Das calls for his son Arjun. And not only calls for him, but there's a very respected elder uh, Baba Buddha in Sikh history. I won't go into it, but he was around since the time of Guru Nanak. He sends Baba Buddha to Lahore with a carriage, with all of ceremony to bring his son back to Amritsar. And Guru Arjan comes, and there's Prithi Chand in the court, and he's been embarrassed out of his mind. And Arjan comes, but it's not done yet. The test of love is not done yet. Arjan presents himself before his father, and now he says, you have to complete it. I need one more letter. And he says to Prithi Chan, if you can finish this, you, the guruship is yours. He gives them a test, asks them both to write the last letter. And this is Guru Arjan's last letter. How wonderfully fortunate this wise saint, my guide of light, has taken me into his embrace. In the most important line, I have found the indestructible creator in the home of my own heart. That when love complete, when we feel completed in love, we feel the divine in ourselves. Love never makes us feel less than. Love always gives us the reflection of our own divine reality. That's what true love does. Serving you each moment, I am never separated from you, not even for an instant. Love manifests as service. Somebody loves you, they will serve you selflessly, wordlessly. That is what the test of love is. Not how many, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. It's the service. Love will show you that you're divine and love will elicit service. Serving you, I am never separate. In the service, we are never separate. I'm never separated from you even for an instant. 
Dear one, Nanak has become your devotee and your slave. I give everything that I am. I dissolve myself as a sacrifice, dear one. Nanak has become your devotee and your slave. The reason the mind and the ego fight against real love so much is because once you love, you become a slave to what you love. Because you don't want to have separateness from it. You don't want to be apart from it. You just want to serve it constantly. So how can you be anything but a slave? This is what this means in the Sikh tradition. I'm a slave to the divine. When I love the divine, I become a slave to the divine. When I love my higher consciousness, I become a slave to my higher consciousness. When I truly see the God in another human being, I will serve the God in that other human being. That's the love we're working to crystallize. So Guru Arjan gives this fourth letter and Guru Ram Das says, and this is the magic moment, the magic moment that Bibi Bonnie called in when she said, I want the Guru ship to pass through me. It's the moment that patriarchy breaks once and for all because the Guru ship doesn't go to the firstborn by any blood right. It goes to the son who had the consciousness to deliver it. And in that moment, Guru Ram Das recognizes Guru Arjan as the next Guru, and Prithi Chan freaks out in the court and starts cursing his father up and down. But it is this profound historical moment where the, the call and the prayer of the Divine Mother says, let the son who has the consciousness of love be the ruler, not the son who's manipulative and political and thinks he's got it by some blood right. And she liberates all of humanity with that prayer and that moment where the son who rose to the consciousness becomes the guru. And the son who had the right falls away in his ego and his pride in his games. That is the historical context where this beautiful love letter comes from. Okay, this is what he said that Guru Ram Das said about these letters. Guru Arjan Dev as Arjan Mal wrote three letters and Guru Ram Das said, complete the fourth letter. He wrote the fourth letter, he got the Guru ship. And then Guru Ram Das, out of the blessing of his heart said, whoever will read these four letters will become my soul, my projection, shall heal people, shall have places, wealth will go after him again and again, there will be nothing in the life of that man which he will fall short of. Mm. Another quote from uh, Yogi Bhajan. The highest disciple love letter is written by Guru Arjan to Guru Ram Das. We call it Shabbat Hazade. Those who sing Shabbat Hazade shall have their souls directly merge with God. Guru Ram Das vouched for it. It allows the separated ones to co come back home again with grace. When anybody is abandoned by love or a, or a lover or there's someone he wants to meet, unite, and put together, if you read that Shabbat Hazare every day and, play it and sing it, playing it 11 times a day as a sadhana, a personal sadhana, it will bring you victory. So this, this moment in time creates this vibration of sacred sound that all of us can vibrate within ourselves to clear the poison of the love that's blocking the call of longing of the soul and manifest, and manifest the love, the highest love that we all came here to manifest. The really annoying thing that the creator has done <laughs> is that it's the separation that creates the longing so that the union can happen. Right? In Japji it says, San jog vi jog dui karchalave. It means the great separation and the preordained union, both forces run the universe. Without the pain of that separation that grows and grows and grows, we don't have the strength to break through the block so the love can live. It's like the, the butterfly that has to break through, you know, if you, if the cocoon. If you try and rip open the cocoon so the butterfly can get out, the butterfly dies because it needs the challenge to break through in order to fly. We have to have the challenge of the separation and the challenge of the poison for the longing to become so intense that it breaks through and we can crystallize the love. If you like this video, click the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. The soul, the soul, when it incarnates into a human body, it incarnates 
because of love. There's a beautiful teaching that your soul did a lot of practice of, de of devotion in order to earn the gift of the human form. And the gift of the human form is that there's this divine love in, in this eternal consciousness. It's just vibrating. 